Now it's time to review the cell. So take out your white note packet, um, or your notes, the student note packet that you have. All right, the cell, this is the basic unit of living things. And what I want you to do right now is pause the video, and I want you to label all of the parts that you can remember on both of these. And I also want you to tell me which one is a plant cell and which one is an animal cell. So go ahead and pause and answer those. Okay, so now that you've had a chance to try and remember what each cell is and all the different parts, I'm going to let you know. The cell here on the left, this is the animal cell, and the cell on the right is the plant cell. On the cell on the left, that's our animal cell, structure A is the same as structure A on the right-hand cell, on the plant cell. They're both pointing to the cell membrane. Structure B is the nucleus. Uh, structure C is only found in plant cells, and this is pointing to a chloroplast. That's where photosynthesis occurs, and that's why we only find it in a plant cell. Structure D is something that's only found in animal cells, and those are centrioles. Those are going to help uh, pull chromosomes apart during cell division. Structure E is found in both of the cells. That's the mitochondria. That's where cellular respiration occurs. And then structure F is only in plant cells. That happens to be the cell wall. All right, so let's start with the cell theory. It's got three parts. And the first part that states that all living things are made of one or more cells. Uh, it can be unicellular, which means it's a single-celled organism, like an amoeba or a paramecium. Or something could be multicellular. It can have more than one cell. There's an organism called a vorticella that only has a few cells, but most multicellular organisms have trillions of cells. Um, Almost all structures in multicelled organisms are made of or by cells. The second part of the cell theory is that cells carry out all of an organism's life functions. Everything you do is the result of the work of your cells. Walking, talking, thinking, feeling. When you get sick, it's because your cells are not working properly. The third part of the cell theory is that all cells come from pre-existing cells. And this does seem obvious now, uh, but at one time people believed in something called spontaneous generation. And that was the idea that living things just emerged from non-living things. But we know now that's not the case. Some exceptions to the cell theory. The first one is viruses, um, like the coronavirus, for example. They're not made of cells. They are basically made of protein and DNA or RNA. Um, but they can replicate, but they can only do so in another cell. They don't really consume nutrients, uh, but they do have DNA. So it, it doesn't perfectly fit the characteristics of life, but it, <clears throat> it can't be eliminated altogether either. So this is definitely something that scientists are in a discussion about, trying to figure out, do we call it something alive? Is it not alive? Um, it's definitely a debatable topic. And the other exception is the very first cell ever obviously did not come from a pre-existing cell. So that's another exception to the cell theory. So we're going to go through some of these organelles. These are all the tiny little parts in eukaryotic cells that make up uh, and, and help that cell function. First one is the nucleus. It controls the cell. It contains hereditary material. We call them chromosomes, genes, DNA. The second part is the cytoplasm. This is the fluid part or the liquid part of the cell. It helps to transport materials. It dissolves things. It is mostly of water. Then we have mitochondria. They have cellular respiration or chemical respiration that occurs within them. And it's nicknamed the powerhouse of the cell because it provides energy or ATP. But if you're ever asked to write an answer about the function of the mitochondria, please don't write powerhouse unless you explain that it means that it's providing energy for the cell. Um, ribosomes are the next organelle, and they make proteins from amino acids. Vacuoles are going to store food, water, and waste. Food vacuoles um, may digest large molecules. And there's a large water vacuole in plant cells that stores uh, a large amount of water for those cells. 
Um, waste vacuoles can excrete waste out of the cell membrane. They can kind of move to the cell membrane and then get rid of waste products that way. The chloroplast is going to carry out photosynthesis. It's only found in plant cells and algae. Then we have a cell wall. Again, it's only in plant cells and some bacteria. It gives shape, structure, and protection to the plant cells. Uh, we'll never see it in an animal cell. Cell membrane, sometimes they call it the plasma membrane or they'll call it the phospholipid bilayer, but it's going to separate the cell's interior from the environment. And it controls what enters and leaves the cell using selective permeability. It's picky about what it lets in and out of the cell. It does have receptor molecules that can pick up signals from other cells. And remember, they have a special shape that determines their function and which proteins and hormones they can um, connect with. It'll have antigens, which are a type of protein that identify the cell. It's kind of like a name tag. And it prevents the cell from being attacked by its own immune system. Uh, so the cell, your body can recognize it as belonging there and it won't attack it. More about the cell membrane, they, uh, the small molecules are able to pass through um, easily just through diffusion from high to low concentration. Things like water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, small sugars, they can pass through. The movement of molecules from high to low concentration is, is how we define diffusion. It does not require energy, so we can call it passive transport. Larger molecules, like proteins and starches, cannot be transported through um, without the help of transport proteins or even active transport. The basic types of proteins in the cell membrane are going to be receptor proteins, transport proteins, antigens. And if a cell has to use energy, like ATP, to move a molecule, it's called active transport. And it's usually moving it from a low to a high concentration. Uh, requiring the use of energy, usually moving molecules from low to high concentration, is against the flow of diffusion. And that's why we need energy to do it. And then there's osmosis. This is the diffusion of water in or out of the cell. If water diffuses into a cell, the cell is going to swell and get bigger, like a water balloon. Um, if it gets too full, like a water balloon, it could burst. If a cell loses water, for example, if it's in a salt water solution, it'll shrivel up. And if it loses too much water, it'll dehydrate, and that'll destroy the cell. And that takes us to the end of the cell topic. You can now go complete your homework questions.